<sighs> Let me get all situated and settled here. Yeah, here's a conversation I didn't think I would have ever again. So for those of you thinking, oh my God, this guy can't pick a DAW to use, Studio One is still the staple in my workflow. Even when I mess around with Ableton Live and other DAWs, the final destination for all of my mixes and masters are still studio are still in Studio One. So Studio One is still my go-to DAW of choice, and I always recommend it to my friends who are looking to maybe get into the recording game. Having said that, Avid was acquired by a company recently. I don't know if you guys noticed that. You can uh, you can Google it for $1.4 billion by a private firm. Now they're a private company again. They're no longer publicly traded, and they being Avid. At first, you know, my initial reaction was, this is a company that just buys stuff. This is a, a private ac acquisition company or firm, whatever they want to call themselves, that deals in software. I did a little bit of research. If you guys know more about it, feel free to comment down below. Let's start a conversation on it. Um, I did a little bit of research. They've been around since about 2001, 2000, and they buy software companies and put money into them. I thought it was going to be a pump and dump scenario to where they're just going to you know, buy Avid for $1.4 billion, dump a lot of money into it, push the stock up, and then sell it to the highest bidder. Because that's what most of these, these acquisition companies, that's what they do. This one seems a little different to me. Again, I don't really know much about them as a company, but the history that I can find, the research I could find on Google, didn't point to that. It didn't point that they were just going to pump and dump Avid. And then Avid comes out with perpetual licensing before the acquisition. So I don't know if they did that just to boost their sales numbers or as a, a show of faith to their customers who are already pissed off at them for going to subscription only model, which is the reason why I never went back to Pro Tools. Pro Tools was my first love. That was the first doll that I cut my teeth in in a professional studio environment. And I use it for almost nine years, eight or nine years just Pro Tools. So I'm not going to lie, every once in a while I'd look back at it and when I'd see people working in Pro Tools and studios and stuff like that, you know, I've got my laptop with Studio One and I would look over and, and get kind of like that nostalgia would hit. I don't know if it was just nostalgia or if I just missed that workflow. There are a couple things that I miss about Pro Tools uh, and I'll get into that in, in a second. But when they brought back the perpetual licensing, that's what really has me interested and then when I saw the prices for these perpetual licensing, the, the perpetual licenses that they have for like Studio and uh, the Premium, whichever one it is, I'll put them on the screen here because I can't remember off the top of my head. But I saw a $200 price tag and you have a cap of no Dolby Atmos currently, this is currently how it goes, and you're capped at 32 tracks. In all honesty, guys and girls, most of the stuff I have been doing has been, you know, singer-songwriter stuff hip-hop R&B stuff, every session I've dealt with in the past year, I'm in every session, has been under 30 tracks. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but I know it was under 30 tracks. It's not really a limitation for me at 32 tracks, but I can understand some of you are like, well, there's no way I could, I could do that with 32 tracks, and I understand that, and I, and I completely get that, because there are a lot of cases like that. Um, but with the Avid pricing structure, they're giving you both options. You can either buy the perpetual license outright, or you can stick with the subscription model. I always said it's really cool when companies give you the option to sign up for a monthly subscription that you can end at any time because you're not under contract, or you can buy the program outright and it's yours. It's not going to expire. I mean, it'll run out of date eventually, but you can then make that decision if they come out with a new version of Pro Tools or Studio One. It's your decision to decide, hey, this is worth whatever it's going to cost me to upgrade. This is worth it to me. But they're not forcing you to do that. And that was my biggest thing with Pro Tools and why I never went back to it, even when I kind of considered it. Because a lot of people I were collaborating with were using Pro Tools, and it's just so much easier when you have the same platform, you can just send sessions back and forth. You don't have to send stems or anything like that. 
I have it downloaded. I have the trial downloaded of Pro Tools Ultimate or whatever it's called. I won't be getting that one. I don't need that. That one I think is still like $1,500 for a perpetual license. But the one for $200 with a 32 track limit, that's the one I looked at because that's the one that probably I will go with. Touching on the topic of the things that I've always missed about using Pro Tools, I love the workflow for Pro Tools as an editor and I love the audio routing, the buses, the sends, returns. Pro Tools always just made the most sense to me in the way that they set it up. So I have been trying Pro Tools for the past uh, four days or so. I haven't finished any sessions in it or anything. I haven't even really brought any big sessions into it, any paid gigs to edit or mix or master. It's Man, it's this is a tough one, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know if it's my bias because, you know, it was my original DAW back in the day, or it's it's just nostalgia, right? So anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. This was more of a conversation piece to start a conversation with you, the audience. I really wanna know what you think about this Pro Tools acquisition thing, and or you know, the Avid thing being bought out, Pro Tools switching back to Perpetual. What are, What's your take on it? If you're a Studio One user or a Logic user and Avid forced your hand to jump ship right back in the day, what do you think of it? Leave your comments down below. Let's start a conversation and I will be uh, patiently waiting to read all of them. And yeah, you guys have a great week. This is a Monday. I'm going to post this. So have a great week. Look forward to new videos coming out with a lot more gear reviews because again, I have a sponsor now that I can't mention just yet, but there's going to be some really cool stuff coming up on the channel. You guys have a good one.